Hello friends, in this session I'm going to discuss a very important question pointed out by, out by one of the students as a doubt question. So this question uh, comes from the serializability topic of transaction and concurrency control. The question has been written as follows. So over here what they do is they give us some set of operations of two transactions T1 and T2 and the important and the different thing about this question is that they do not specify the schedule which actually gives the actual interleaved order of the operations in which various transactions execute the operations. So over here from this question it may seem it is just a serial schedule with T1 executing itself first and then T2 executing all the operations of itself but if it in case it was as like that then the question actually did not come didn't, should have not come from such a topic of transaction and concurrency control because we know that serial schedules are always the ones which result in a consistent output right so it always results in a consistency so in that case the question of con checking serializability should have never been arise right so over here what the question next states is it says that any non-serial interleaving of t1 and t2 what does it do so then they give various options that whether it is serializable non-serializable conflict serializable etc so the point is what they want to state over here is we need to focus on this very statement any non-serial interleaving of T1 and T2. Any non-serial interleaving of T1 and T2. So, that means the answer they are asking us is in respect to generalized all the interleaved fashions of T1 and T2. What I mean to say is that even if I prove this wrong for any one of the interleaved schedule, I am done with this question. So, this was the main point which ha you had to capture from this question that what this question really wants to ask from you right now if i know this that i can uh, even if i prove this for any one of the interleaved fashion of t1 and t2 i'm done with this question that means now quickly i can just write one schedule with t1 and t2 operations written parallelly and i can just check the condition for it because if it holds for one i mean if it is for a uh, false for one, I'm done and I'll just choose the answer according to this because this statement actually says that it should hold for all. So even if it is false for one, it is false for it is false for the question, right? So let us check now. How would I check? I just said that I'll just write these operations parallelly. So I'm going to solve this question on life. So, I am just going to write these operations. So, for T1 and here I have T2. What I am going to do is I am just going to write these operations. So, this is read P. I am going to write it as RP and since it is being executed by T1, I will write R1P like we have solved the other questions. Then R4Q we have. Then we have W1Q. Right. And similarly, if I would write for T2, I will have R2Q, then R2P, then W2P. Right? Okay. Now, next, what is to be done? So, I have already specified whenever you you have been given any serializability question, just go for the precedence graph method, which is the fastest method to check for conflict serializability, right? So, what I am going to do next is, I am going to draw that graph, right? You are really right. I am going to do, the, I am going to draw that graph. So, for that graph, what I am going to do is, I am going to draw how many nodes? Two nodes, because we have two transactions, right? So, I write T1 over here. This is my one node and then T2 over here as the other node, right? Now, I am going to draw the arrows of conflicts if I am getting. Now, very simple. We all know what are the conflicts. Either it is a read-write pair or a write-write pair or a write-read pair in different transactions, right? So, if I check for T1 over here, if I check for T1, I see this is read P, right? So, for a conflict to occur from T1 to T2, what will we require to search over here? We require 
a write operation on the same data item P. So it occurs over here. So this is a conflict, right? So I'll mark it with red. I'll mark this conflict with red over here with this peculiar sign. And now I'll draw it over here. So it is from R1 to R2. Why from R1 to R2? Because first this operation is occurring and then this. So I'll also label it with the same operation. This to W to P. And similarly now I'll check. Now when will this not be conflict serializable? When some loop will occur, right? So the fastest method to solve this question is now I should check for a conflict from T2 to T1. So now I'll analyze T2 now. So if I see this operation, read Q, it should not happen that this should have any write Q over here after this. So I have it over here, right? So that means there is a conflict. So I get another conflict. I'll mark it with the square or rectangular boxes. So this is another conflict. And what is its direction? Its direction is 2 to 1. Because first this is occurring and then this is occurring. So let me just also draw it over here. This is R to Q to W1 Q. So that means now a loop is occurring. So this is not conflict serializable. So we are done for this question and we have the option. If I read the questions options to you, the option say that the B part, the B part says a schedule that is not conflict serializable. So over here I'm going to mark it as the answer is B. It is not conflict serializable. Why it is not conflict serializable? Because, because a loop is occurring over here, right? A cycle is occurring. So it is definitely non-conflict serializable. But since, but since we are preparing for gate, so I advise all of you that whenever you are solving any conflict serializability question, please do not stop over there if you get non-conflict serializability as the answer. Also try for the view serializability. So yes, we are not going to stop over here. We are going to also try out the concept of view serializability because you can also get the same question with view serializability concept in your next upcoming gate of exam, right? So we do not want to uh, stop at any incomplete thing. We need to check for all the possible options. So if I start with the view serializability thing, if I start with the view serializability, what do I require? I require to check three things. Initial read, I require to check three things. Initial read, then I require to check update and then I require to check the final update and for both the data items P and Q. Right. So we have the order over here. We'll just check and write down. So first of all, if for if for P I check the initial read, I get to know that both of the transactions perform the initial read because there is no write operation before these read instructions. So that means T1 and T2 both come here. Then for Q, if I check for Q, again, both of the transactions perform initial read because there is no write operation, write Q before these read operations. So T1 and T2. Then update, if I check, this T1 only updates Q and T2 only updates P. Now, if I check final update, since there is no other update, these updates only become the final updates. Next, we need to write the orders. So, if we check the order from here, we get to know that initial read T1 should not be violated because of T2. So, T1 should always come before T2. Similarly, T2 should, T2 should always come before T1. Now, since both the orders, both the orders are opposite of each other, that means this is also not view serializable. This is also not view serializable. Right. So, now we are completely done with this question. So, I'm sure you would have got a great clarity of the concept and really a good choice of question, really good doubt question. You may get the same question with view serializability in the upcoming gate exam. So, I'm sure uh, the explanation would have helped you uh, to some extent in case it really did. So, please like the video from the like by clicking the like button, thumbs up button. 
below and in case you loved it please subscribe and keep subscribed for more good work coming up thank you